It's the Mike Wills Podcast. To the next edition of the Mike Wills Podcast. Today is April 14th, 2020. And I am also now known as WX0 MIK stroke AG. Oh no, AE. Come on. <laughs> Let's try this again. WX0 MIK stroke AE. Uh, tonight I took my amateur radio, t- uh, amateur radio, amateur extra test. It's kind of a mouthful. Um, th- through are fully online through the organization is called Glarg. The, um, I believe it's called the greater Los Angeles. I should probably have had this pulled up. Oops. Uh, G L A A R G V E C greater Los Angeles amateur radio group. There you go. They are a V E C group. Um, obviously from Los Angeles and, uh, they were doing online tests. I discovered that, um, about Friday or Saturday, I can't remember exactly which day they started, uh, last Sunday and today was the second session, second session, I think. And I was able to get in right away and, um, I booked for an, seven o'clock their time nine o'clock my time actually i think it took the test what eight thirty ish or so honestly um oh here it tells me right here i started at oh this is greenwich mean time never mind <laughs> i'm not gonna do the math right now <laughs> so uh how did it work so first you go online and you find they give you a bunch of instructions and let's see this is yeah so what they kind of tell you to do is to first if you want to book a time make sure that you get in um go on to this calendarly link calendarly.com and then reserve yourself a time slot Uh, and that's what i did to ensure that i had a spot Apparently, because there's enough demand, they did a, um, you know, if people want to jump in or something, really, you got to talk to them about what's happening, how it's working. Um, and then there's a, a nice, I think it's up to a five page document right now of instructions some of these instructions are very similar to if you had an in-person test. And then obviously you have the online component and online uh, requirements. So I was not expecting him to come in quite so soon. So when I, um, when I, uh, I, I was busy doing uh, some work stuff and then they jumped in. So I forgot to disable my last pass, uh, extension, but otherwise I, and I hadn't closed off a bunch of, uh, Chrome tabs yet. Beyond that, I had all of my, um, that's extra programs running, you know, like Dropbox and OneDrive and whatever else I have running normally on my computer. Those were all turned off or exited out. I had all programs exited out uh, with the exception of Chrome at that point and Zoom. And Zoom I had already installed. I had tested it out. Uh, Being I have my work PC here, I was able to test, make sure I could, you know, the microphone and stuff is working. I wasn't worried about that, but um, if you have a Mac, um, if you want to be super prepared, uh, there is a permission that needs to be granted in order to allow them to control your PC. Um, you probably have to work with someone to make sure that permission's done, but that's the only piece that I wasn't quote like ready for when we started. <clears throat> um, let's see here. What else was there? 
okay, so that was that's kind of the instruction side, and those are up to you to read, and they probably get updated with any other questions that people may have. Um, the, the other big thing that they I'll, I'll mention here is that um, they re request that you have a room where you have no one else coming in and out. You know, you can't hear anyone talk. So you can't just sit down in your living room unless you live alone. Um, or maybe a wife or something, or spouse working somewhere else. But in what I'll call a, quote, normal household where you have a spouse and kids, um, or pets or whatever, you need to find a room that's more out of the way, less traveled, so on. Even when in here it says, uh, clean your bathroom and you can use your bathroom. Um, in my case, I was out in the garage. Uh, I had a nice spot to set my laptop down on my um, freezer. I turned the, cranked the heat up. And then when it was time to take the test, I turned that off or down so it wouldn't run. But I had enough heat out there and so on. So just carefully read the instructions. I, you know, It's very important that you do that so you're prepared. They are assuming when they log in that you are pretty much ready to go. You know, there's always going to be a couple of things that, you know, they're going to check a couple of things and make sure everything's kind of good. But they just want to make sure that you're pretty much ready to go. That's kind of where it's getting to, to the point uh, in the end. Um, and then the only other, uh, well, two steps, I guess, technically is uh, you have to click on another link to take you to uh, hamstudy.org, I think it is, um, where you, um, yeah, there, there, there's another link you click somewhere that will uh, guide you to register for the test online. And this is the actual registration. So you have Calendarly that is kind of booking, booking your spot. And then... It's Ham Study is the program at least. Ham Study is the program that um, you have to actually re fill in some information on that. It's kind of similar to filling out the uh, what's it called the CEC. I should have know this. Uh, Will uh, of course I'm not going to be able to view the name of it. I think it's a CEC um, that you it's used to fill out that information. Um, if it's not that, if you've taken the test before, you know what it is. If you haven't, they'll walk you through that. Um, so, and then uh, they do ask that you are confident that you're going to pass it. Uh, not because, um, you know, it's, you know, they don't, it's not, how do I want to phrase this? It's not because they want you to, uh, well, it's, it's, Sorry, my brain's not working right. They want to make sure that you pass the first chance just so that you're not sitting there taking up time um, trying over and over and over again online when there's other people as well that want to pass. So they do ask that you're confident that you'll pass. I mean, you obviously can't guarantee that you'll pass, and they totally understand that. But they, they're they going to be under the assumption that you have at least practiced some Uh they joking, kind of sort of half jokingly asked, have you been studying on ham on ham study? And I said, actually, unfortunately, no, I have not. And, you know, we didn't really discuss too much on it, but I was like, I actually use QRZ. I kind of like that better. That was my personal opinion, my personal preference. I do own the app from ham study. Um, I totally support them. It just didn't, I just didn't study the way I was used to studying based on my tech in general, because I did not know about ham study at that time. So I used what I was familiar with at that particular point. Uh, the $5, or it's a fee. I, I shouldn't say it's necessarily going to be $5 for everyone, but uh, the fee was then paid by PayPal in this, particular, in this particular case. And in my case, I paid it ahead of time. I, I guess you could pay it afterwards too, potentially. But uh, obviously that is a condition to before you can actually get your oh certificate of successful completion of examination, CSCE. There we go. Uh, so if you pass... 
then what they do is they send you a form that needs to be signed. And they're using, um, what is the service called? Adobe Sign in order to process it. So you click on the review and sign link. You you can uh, like sign your name, type your name, however you want to do it. Hit uh, the sign button. And then uh, once everybody else signs the form, it is um, processed and, I mean, you're good. So... In a nutshell, I think that's about as much as I'm con I'm going to share on that. Um, as far as your environment, you know, they want to see the environment. What am I sitting on? Is um, they did not in in my particular case request a copy of my certificate. Um, I did have a handy. I did have all the form stuff handy. Uh, they just need to see my ID. Everything was good. Uh, I put that stuff, well, since I was in the garage, on my car, away from everything, and then I started uh, testing. Um, <clears throat> I can't compare it necessarily to anything that, um, <laughs> as far as how, how it works, but you just answer the question, you can hit the keyboard, or you can hit, hit use the mouse, and you're done. Um, they do do some sign-ins and, and stuff along the way where they got into um, passwords and all that stuff to make it all work. But beyond that, um, it wasn't bad. I passed. And uh, we we're ready for the next, um, next step. Uh, so at the end, they... I don't know if, I don't know if it's necessarily jokingly, but they kind of did... Uh, make a side comment at least of yeah so so now you can become a ve and uh help us out it's like actually you know what? that was my next question so i was going to ask about that so the lady who's kind of leading it uh she mentioned that she's actually the one that reviews all the applications and just send it in she'll know who i am and uh do what's do their processing on their side so more than like i sent in my paperwork right away uh before even the c S C E, yeah, C S C E is is signed. I turned that in and um, got that uh, going. So um, it sounds like you can do shifts and stuff. I'm not quite sure how all that works, but um, it sounds like you have to sit there all day at least. <laughs> Although they they did uh, make mention that. Um, or they jokingly said something about, yeah, you know, you only have to work for three days straight or something like that. Like, well, I'm not quite that young anymore. <laughs> uh, so I really like I it was. As far as I'm concerned, it was very easy. Um, they, you know, it was. Um, it's it felt like they were doing the, everything right. And, you know, they looked at my desk and stuff to make sure everything was good in the surrounding area and stuff, make sure there was nothing there. Obviously, I was not out to try and cheat to begin with, so um, there was no issues there at all. So at this point, I passed, and um, I will, I do intend to, I, I got to confirm first, I'm under the assumption our local club is... Uh, VEs are through the ARRL. So I, I will become a VE for ARRL as well, or whatever it takes to do that. And then um, I will be doing that in the future as well. So uh, other than that, I thought this would be a good uh, episode to share out with everybody. I think I'm going to throw this one up on YouTube to share out to Facebook groups. And then um just so all of you who have never listened to to me before, uh, my name is Mike Wills. Uh, this is much more of an audio blog than it is um, anything else. And I talk about random subjects in most cases, typically surround, uh, around weather and uh, amateur radio and kind of what I'm doing with an amateur radio. And then... Um, usual miscellaneous life stuff that's happening and so on. I may go on an occasional rant here and there, um, but I try and keep it usually pretty good. And um, 
A lot of mine are recorded in the car, so the audio quality is not good. But this one, obviously, I wanted to get into the studio so I could record at um, much higher quality audio. So the um, I also wanted to add in that uh, I this is part of our daily podcasting challenge for the dog days of quarantine. Uh, you typically we have a challenge in. I think it's August leading up to Dragon Con where we do a podcast a day for 30 days. And it's not necessarily anything but a group of friends getting together. We razz each other a little bit, um, have, have fun doing it. But the point is to kind of get back to the old days of podcasting where you just kind of sit down and record. Uh, don't really care about audio quality. The point is getting down and recording. And that's typically what I do. I usually record one about once a week. Um, if you want to learn more about all the other people out there, there's some really cool people out there. Um, one fun one is um, where you g- guess that um, disaster movie. Um, and that, that was kind of a, a, it's kind of a fun little competition to see who can guess first. Um, in fact, I'm waiting for the next one to come out. <laughs> um, but um, go to dogdaysofpodcasting.com. And you can find all of us there. Uh, so we are doing dog days of quarantine and I do not remember what day this is or what week this <laughs> is of quarantine because I have not been keeping count. So, um, uh, thank you everyone for listening and I hope this was informative to you. I know this might be kind of a little more boring for you, uh, than dog days of quarantine, but you may find this interesting, but I want to get this out there. So people kind of know what to expect. And uh, I will, I think I know what the official URL is, or at least where I went. So I think that's the one I will share um, and point, get people going the right direction. Uh, so I, you can do your tech, you can do your general, you can go for tech and general. I, you know, if you're really ready, you can go for your your extra, but, you know, whatever you want to go for, you can go, th- go through them all in the... Uh, right through the software. So um, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Every, thank you everybody for listening. Uh, you can uh, learn more about me at mikewills.me. Uh, if you want to learn about my amateur radio stuff, you can go to wx0mik.net. That will take you directly to my amateur radio page. I don't have a lot of good content there yet, but I'm, I'm probably slowly going to work more towards that here now. Um, and then you can go to uh, wiki.wx0.net, wx0mik.net, I guess, be, be right? That is my amateur radio wiki. And my focus there is to share out valuable resources to people um, and regarding to amateur radio, how to build antennas. And the thing there is I don't want to build all the content. I do build some stuff here and there. But primarily, I want to link up to the best of the best information out there so that you can find it and you and it's properly um, uh, notated as to who did it and so on. Because I don't want to take credit for new or uh, a, a new antenna design or something that I happen to find somewhere else. I just want to make sure that they, um, you know, that I link to that proper source. So, uh until probably tomorrow, this is WX0 MIK and 73 to everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy. And uh, I think the frequency is now clear. The intro music was Funkily Dugatitude by the late Derek K. Miller. The outro is Always Evermore by Eric Dietrich. You can contact me on most social networks with the username Mike Wills, one word. You can email me at mike at mikewills.me. You can find any show notes and my blog at mikewills.me. Thank you for listening and come back again. Mm-hmm.